You could blindly pick any OLED gaming monitor release this year and slap it on a list of the best monitors, and it, it makes sense. With a small selection of panels available, basically every OLED gaming monitor looks great. MSI, however, has a very unique take on the growing market of OLED gaming monitors with the MPG321URX QD OLED, and it has a big edge over the competition when it comes to crowning a winner of the best OLED gaming monitor in 2024. And that really all comes down to price. MSI aggressively undercut the competition with the MPG321URX by anywhere from $250 to $350. I thought that would mean some clear compromises in other areas of the display, but as I quickly learned after unboxing my review unit, that's simply not the case. But hey, before getting into the rest of the review, make sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed, please, and thank you. The specs here should be pretty familiar. This is a 32-inch QD OLED display with a 4K resolution and a 240 hertz refresh rate. It's using a Samsung Display QD OLED panel, and MSI says it can reach 1,000 nits of peak brightness in HDR. It also cites a 0.03 millisecond response time and a certification with Vesa Display HDR True Black 400. It's pretty familiar territory. The design is also familiar territory, but not always for the best. It doesn't look bad, just a little bland. The shell is plastic, and from the front, you can confuse the MPG321URX with any other 32-inch monitor. A big highlight here, though, is the glossy finish, which is a big upside when combined with the OLED panel underneath. All of the real flair, though, is behind the monitor, but it's still not very much. There's a faux brush metal look around the heatsink, that's still plastic, by the way, as well as a glossy MSI Dragon logo. There's also an MSI logo on top of the heatsink that you can control with the MSI Mystic Light. It's small and pretty dim though, so you'll never actually see it while using the display. Pedestrian as the design of the MPG321URX is, the stand MSI includes is excellent. There's a routing channel that's positioned behind the monitor, so there aren't any dangling cables, and MSI opted for a single square stand as opposed to the, you know, long legs you can see on monitors like the Samsung Odyssey Neo G8. There's also a pretty good range of adjustment. You get just over four inches of height adjustment, 20 degrees of tilt and pivot, and a generous 60 degrees of swivel. You can have the monitor set up in the corner of your desk and just adjust the screen with the included stand. Still, if you need more adjusted, there's a 100mm by 100mm base amount available. The most direct competition for the MPG321URX is the ASUS ROG PG32UCDM. Make sure to check out our review of that. And the MSI monitor definitely takes a backseat to the ASUS display with its set of features. The main feature of the MPG321URX is the USB-C input that's capable of 90 watts of power delivery. This is routed into a KVM switch, allowing you to seamlessly use your peripherals across two different sources. There are a couple of caveats, however. MSI only uses USB 2.0 ports. That shouldn't be a problem for your mouse and keyboard, but it limits the usability of the USB ports for things like, say, an external hard drive or a webcam. The USB hub is for your keyboard and mouse and really not much else. Compared to the ASUS competition, MSI is missing a few other features. Most notably, it doesn't include black frame insertion or BFI, which is one of the key selling points of ASUS's display. On the other hand, MSI includes power delivery with USB-C and a KVM switch, both of which are absent on Alienware's more expensive take on this panel. MSI really gains an end with its OLED prevention features, which I'll dig into a little bit later on. All right, let's talk about controlling the monitor. I really appreciate how easy it is to control the MPG321URX, and that really comes down to how large the on-screen display is. It's big and high enough resolution that you're not squinting as you scroll through the option. This all happens with the joystick around the back of the monitor, but it's centered, so I never really had any trouble finding it. And thankfully, you can control the monitor with your mouse if you hook up the USB-B connection to your PC. MSI packs in the options, but everything is clearly labeled. You get six color modes tailored for gaming, eight picture modes that can clamp the color to different gamuts, and two HDR modes. Even better, you can access the different color and picture modes with HDR turned on, though you still can't mess with settings like brightness and contrast with HDR enabled. For ports, MSI is a pretty standard array here. You get two HDMI 2.1 connections along with the DisplayPort 1.4A port. That means you'll need to run display stream compression if you want the full resolution and refresh rate if you're using the DisplayPort connection. The HDMI port also supports variable refresh rate and downscaling, so they're perfectly suited for consoles. The integrated USB hub isn't stellar. As mentioned, you have USB-C input with 90 watts of power delivery and a KVM switch, both of which are great inclusions, but 
The real problem here is that the USB-A ports are locked to USB 2.0. You can't use them for those accessories, and that is a big downside when looking at the full port selection. All right, those are some details out of the way. Let's talk about the real meat and potatoes here, image quality. I have to be honest, I went into this review a pessimist. Surely, I thought, if MSI was undercutting the competition so much, there would be some sacrifice to image quality. I expected wonky color, disappointing color accuracy, and brightness that just missed the mark. Not due to the MSI branding, but due to the price. I'm really happy to say that I was wrong. The image quality on the MPG321 URX is fantastic. It's just as good as the other monitors we've tested using the same panel and even a bit better than the PG32 UCDM with the default settings out of the box. You're really not giving up anything with this monitor despite what its price would suggest. Out of the box, the monitor is tuned to the Eco Picture Profile with premium color as the game mode. This configuration is pretty solid. With it, I measured 100% of sRGB, 87% of Adobe RGB, and 98% of DCI-P3. The premium color game mode seems to unlock the full range of color available on the monitor, which means accuracy is a bit off. It's not bad, just not the best we've seen, clocking an average of just over 1.3. MSI includes three modes to clamp the color gamut, which vastly improves the color accuracy. There's an sRGB mode, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3. With these modes, the color accuracy is fantastic. sRGB had the lowest result with an error of 0.69, while Adobe RGB had the highest at 0.94 and DCI-P3 was right in the middle with 0.79. All these results are fantastic, and as you would expect, the color error scales with the coverage of these different color spaces. Brightness is really on point here too. This is the same Samsung Display third gen QD OLED panel we've seen before, and it was able to hit 987 nits of brightness for just 1% of the screen in the HDR Peak 1000 mode. That's pretty typical of what we expect out of this panel as showcased by monitors like the Alienware 32 QD OLED, and once again, we have a review for that, so make sure to check it out. SDR brightness, on the other hand, is still lacking. It topped out at 238 nits, which is a hair below some of the other QD OLED options. It's not far behind, but if you're looking for blistering brightness, HDR is still the way to go with this display. All right, that's image quality. Let's talk gaming. The MPG321 URX is a gaming monster, and you really don't even need to take my word for it. It's certified with Display HDR True Black 400, so you're getting great HDR performance, and it supports adaptive sync, so you have VRR across both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. That's not to mention the 4K resolution and super fast 204Hz refresh rate. This really is the peak gaming experience for most people across both consoles and PC. Compared to other OLED options, MSI really stands out with its Clear MR 13000 certification. This is a relatively young standard that tests and validates motion clarity, and MSI is topping the charts here. The 13000 tier is the highest available, so high in fact that it wasn't even available when Clear MR launched about a year and a half ago. Due to the high refresh rate and low response times of OLED, most gaming displays could earn this certification, and some, such as LG's OLED panels, already have. Still, it's really nice to see MSI go out of its way to put a stamp of approval on its high-end gaming monitor. As far as actually using the monitor for gaming, I mean, there really isn't much to say. We've seen this panel before in the amazing gaming experience it offers, and MSI lives up to that standard. The HDR experience stands out the most, adding a ton of depth to immersive games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Alan Lake 2. These games shine all the more on a large 4K display like the MPG321 URX. The detail is really unmatched, and with a third gen QD OLED panel, you don't get the weird color fringing on fine details like we saw on some earlier QD OLED monitors. The main downside, realistically, is that you'll need a super powerful PC to run this display. With a 240Hz refresh rate, 4K resolution, and large size, you can't really afford to run games at a lower resolution without sacrificing experience. There's a definite upside for consoles here too, both due to the 120Hz mode built into the display and the ability to downscale the 1440p through the HDMI port. MSI supports picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture -picture modes, but the console experience is so great because it neatly fits on a 16x9 4K display with HDMI 2.1 at the helm. On the PC side, competitive games also get a boost because you're getting pretty excellent motion clarity on an OLED panel. For me, the cinematic experience is why you really go with an OLED monitor, but the low response times and 240Hz refresh rate definitely provide a boost when you want to squeeze in a few rounds of Valorant or Fortnite. Well, let's address the elephant in the room with any OLED panel, and that's, of course, burn-in. MSI has upped its warranty game a lot. 
similar to Alienware, Corsair, and now even Asus, you get three years of coverage on this monitor that includes burn-in. For MSI, burn-in means a luminance of less than or equal to 3.5% at 50% gray with the peak HDR mode. I really doubt you'll ever get there in three years though, as MSI includes one of the most comprehensive suites of burn-in prevention features money can buy. The package is called OLED Care 2.0. Like other brands, MSI includes a panel protect cycle to refresh the pixels after four hours of accumulated use. There are a far greater array of options at your disposal though. There's a pixel shifting feature with various speeds, as well as a slew of features that automatically detect and dim static elements on your screen. There's multi-logo detection, which will pick up on the, you know, say HUD in your games and reduce their brightness to prevent burn-in. And there's also taskbar protection, which will cut out the Windows taskbar. Perhaps the most important though is boundary detection. This automatically adjusts the brightness of boundaries on your screen, such as when you know you have two windows open at the same time. This is the one area of burn-in that's most difficult to avoid on a desktop, especially if you usually have multiple windows open. It's impossible to say what all of these features add up to, uh, at least without thousands of hours of dedicated testing. They may add up to make the monitor much less susceptible to burn-in, or they may not move the needle compared to, you know, the standard suite of OLED prevention features you see in other displays. Still, MSI definitely includes more prevention features than other brands, specifically targeting critical burn-in risks like window boundaries and the Windows taskbar. These features on their own wouldn't be enough, but MSI backs it up with a three-year warranty matching the other options on the market. All right, on to some conclusions. I went into this review with pretty low expectations, I have to be honest, and I came out surprised. MSI is able to match the competition from Asus and Alienware in image quality, support, and display options, all while undercutting the price by anywhere from $250 to $350. The only features you're really giving up are BFI compared to the Asus model and DisplayPort 2.1 compared to the upcoming Gigabyte version. And those are both really justified trade-offs given how much cheaper this MSI model is. I mean, the MPG321 URX, it's it's an enigma. It doesn't make sense how it's priced compared to the competition, especially with the few compromises it makes along the way. I don't know, maybe it's MSI just trying to get a leg up on the hotly competitive OLED market, or maybe the other options have just been too expensive all along. It really doesn't matter, and frankly, I really don't care. As it stands right now, the MPG321 URX is the cheapest way to get an OLED display that's this high of quality, and it doesn't really give up much to reach its excellent price. But hey, I want to know what you think in the comments below. Is it worth it to spend an extra 250 to 350 bucks for a few extra features, or are you solely focused on image quality? Leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, make sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed. All right, thanks for watching everyone. I will see you in the next video.